we are still into the period of sine and cosine functions. What are periodic functions? So, a function f is periodic if there is a positive real number c such that f of x plus c is equal to f of x, or for our circular function, sine of x plus c is equal to sine of x, cosine of x plus c is equal to cosine of x, and the smallest number c is the period of our function y is equal to f of x. And so we saw from our last video that the period of y is equal to sine of x is 2 pi, and the period for y is equal to cosine of x is 2 pi. So we are careful with how we say it. Okay, so pay attention to how we say it. We are saying that the period of y is equal to cosine of x is 2 pi. We don't say the period of cosine is 2 pi because there are variations to how we can define our circular functions. So how did this come about? Why is it that our uh, functions y is equal to sine of x and y is equal to cosine of x are periodic functions? Well, let us go back to how we are evaluating the sine and cosine of an angle. So we must go back to our unit circle. So given an angle whose arc length or angle measure is x, the sine of that angle is the second coordinate of this point. Okay, so x has an end point in our arc. And that point has a pair of coordinates. The second coordinate is sine of x. The first coordinate is cosine of x. Now, suppose we shall trace a longer angle. Not just x, okay? So this one is x. But what we shall do is, upon reaching x, we will rotate our angle one more revolution, and the end point of that arc is going to fall on this point. But that is a longer arc. So what now is sine? What is sine of x plus 2 pi? Okay, so where did x plus 2 pi come from? Well, this is x, okay? And then we add another 2 pi. So that is x plus 2 pi. So what is sine of x plus 2 pi? It is equal to the, the second coordinate of this point, And it is sine of x. That is why we are describing the sine and cosine functions as periodic functions. So our sine and cosine functions are periodic functions. And the periods for y is equal to sine of x is 2 pi. Okay, by the way, our symbol for period is p. It's 2 pi. And the same with y is equal to cosine of x. So we can look at the period as the length of the interval that contains one sine curve or one cosine curve. So this is one sine curve and the length of the interval that contains that is this one. It's from 0 to 2 pi. From 2 pi to 4 pi, you have one, you have another sine curve and then from 4 pi to 6 pi, another sine curve. The period is not this. This is not the period. Okay, The length of that is so much longer than the period. The period is the length of the interval that contains one sine curve. Or another way of describing it is it is the horizontal distance covered by one sine curve. So let us now level up. From y is equal to sine of x, let us go to y is equal to sine of b times x and y is equal to cosine of b times x. So this one is the graph of our function y is equal to sine of x. We discover that its period is equal to 2 pi. Now, from y is equal to sine of x, let us go to... Now look at that. 
Pay attention to what happened. What is the period of this function? So the period is the length of the interval that contains one sine curve. Okay, so this is one sine curve. And the length of the interval that contains that is this one. It's equal to pi. Look at this. From pi to 2 pi, you have another sine curve. How about when our function becomes y is equal to sine of 4x? Pay attention to what 4 does to our graph. Coming from y is equal to sine of uh, x. Okay, look at that. The length of the interval that contains one sine curve is 2 pi. Now compare that now with this. y is equal to sine of 4 times x. Look at this. This is one sine curve. And the length of the interval that contains that is pi over 2. From these three curves, we can now make uh, some inferences about what the coefficient b does to the period of our function. How about when b is between 0 and 1? So the b's that I showed in the previous slide were b's greater than 1. How about when b is something like one half sine of one half times x so b is equal to one half this is our curve for y is equal to sine of x now we are going to move to the orange one okay so starting from this point okay so this is one sine curve that is one sine curve and the length of the interval that contains that one sine curve is, look at that, 0 to 4 pi. Now, how about when our b is 1 fourth? Okay, so the violet uh, curve, let's begin from this one, negative 4 pi. That violet curve is the graph of y is equal to sine of 1 fourth times x. Look at what 1 fourth does to the graph of y is equal to sine of x. Okay, so again, this is y is equal to sine of x, and this is y is equal to one-fourth times sine of x. It lengthens the period of the function y is equal to sine of x. So in this case, the period is equal to 8 pi, okay? You can see it here, okay? Let's say, for example, we begin with negative 4 pi. Okay, negative 4 pi. We will trace one sine curve. Look at that. You end there. You begin here and you end here. What's that? What's the length of the, uh, of the interval that contains one complete sine curve? It is 4 pi plus 4 pi. It's 8 pi. In general, let b be any positive real number. The period p of these functions, the period p of y is equal to 8 times sine of bx, and y is equal to 8 times cosine of bx is 2 pi over b. So that is how you compute for the period of your sine and cosine functions. If we are given these functions, okay, so the, the period for y is equal to sine of x is 2 pi over 1, which is equal to 2 pi, okay? So b here is equal to 1. b here is equal to 2. So the period is over 2, which is equal to pi. b here is equal to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is 1 half. So computing for the period, 2 pi divided by 1 over 2. Okay? when our b is equal to 6, so y is equal to sine of 6 times x, b is equal to 6, our period here is 2 pi over 6, and that is equal to pi over 3. How about when our function is defined in this way? y is equal to sine of pi times x, b here is equal to pi, so our period here is equal to 2 pi over b. 
it's pi, so it's equal to 2.